In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural gold solar panels material. Now, if you're wanting to create a more original classic blue solar panels material, then I have another solar panels material, which I created a little while back, and you can check out that video with the link in the description. But I had the idea to create these solar panels because these are what the solar panels look like on the International Space Station. Now, after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join it together into this custom node group so you can control the look of the material. So we have the scale value, so you can use this to change the size of the material on your object. We also have a metallic value if you want to make it look less metallic. And then we have the two colors here, so we kind of have the gold color. You can make it a different color if you want. And then we also have color 2 here, and that is going to be the black color. Then we also have this grid visibility. So if I turn this down, it's going to get rid of that other grid there. So you can see there's another grid there kind of in the center, but it's a little bit less visible, and you can make it more visible and less visible. Then we have the roughness of the material, so you can make it more reflective or more rough and then we finally have the bump strength and if you'd like to purchase this procedural material you can get that on my gumroad store and my patreon page and you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials now, if you like creating sci-fi artworks in Blender, then you might be interested in checking out my sci-fi construction robot Blender tutorial series. So that's an 11 part tutorial series where I show you step by step in real time how to create this sci-fi construction robot. So the course covers the entire process, including modeling the robot, doing the materials and the lighting, and even rigging and animating the robot. And then we render the animation and create this finished robot animation. If you'd like to learn more about the course, you can check out the course training video with the link in the description and I'll have the product pages linked in the description. So real quick I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I went to mesh and I added an icosphere and then right behind me on the add icosphere settings I turned the subdivisions up to 6 so it is nice and smooth and then I used the object context menu and shaded it smooth. And then I want to scale this down better to the real life scale in Blender so I'm going to scale this down by 0.2 and I will press ctrl a and apply the scale. I'll also go to the add menu and add a plane and I'll scale this plane down by 0.2 and also press ctrl a and apply the scale and I'll move this over and I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis and I'll bring these into the center. Then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects. And if you select the camera and go to the object data properties of the camera, I turned the focal length up to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a little bit. Now for the lighting, I added in this area light right here, so I'll just go into the rendered viewport mode so you can see the light. So I added this area light and I turned the power up to 8. And then also if you go over here to the world properties, I added in this machine shop 02 1k HDRI from polyhaven.com, link will be in the description if you'd like to download it. And I downloaded the 1k HDR version on polyhaven. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot next to color and you can choose environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And then if you want to make the background transparent like I have, you can go up here to the render properties and you can open up the film tab and then just click on the transparent button. And then also if you open up the color management settings right here down here on the bottom, I changed the view transform to filmic and I set the look to very high contrast to make everything more contrasted and saturated. So I'm in the shading workspace, so I have the 3D viewport right over here. I'm in the rendered mode and I'm going to go into the camera view and then I have the shader editor right over over here. So I'll just select the object, click on new to add a new material, and I will click and drag and drop this material onto the other object so they both have the same material. And I'll just rename this material to gold solar panels. And then I'll also be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and then on the add-ons tab, if you go to the search and search for node wrangler, you can check mark the node wrangler add-on so it's built into Blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So to start off, I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a brick texture. And let's hold down the control and shift key and select the brick texture. And that's using the feature of the node wrangler and it's going to preview the brick texture on the object. Let's also select the brick and we're going to press Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And I want to use the object coordinates, so I'll put the object into the vector and the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. Now if you are previewing the material on a sphere, the brick texture might be showing from the top. So if you want to, you can just rotate this, rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees so you can kind of see it from the side view. Alright, so let's now change the brick texture setting. So I'm going to turn this offset all the way up to 1 so it doesn't look like bricks and it looks more like solar panels. Then here on color 1 and color 2 I'll make these fully white and the mortar I'm going to make fully black. 
and then I'll leave all the other settings how they are. Now I want to make three different brick textures and we'll be mixing them together. So I'll bring this brick texture down here and I'll press Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate the node but keep the wire plugged up. Let's Control Shift and select this brick texture and we can change these settings. So for this one, I'm going to turn the scale to 20 so it is much smaller. And on the mortar smooth, I'm going to turn this to a 0.4. And then I'll leave the other settings how they are. And then I'll select the brick texture. I'll press Control Shift D to duplicate the node, but keep the wire plugged up. Let's Control Shift and select this brick texture, and I want to change these settings. So for this one, I'm going to turn the scale to 120, and also the mortar size, I'm going to turn to a 0.17. And then also here on the brick width and the row height, I want them both to be a 0.5 so that they are little squares instead. And this mortar smooth, I will turn to zero. So now I want to mix all these brick textures together. So to mix them, I can select this one, shift select this one, and then I'll press control zero. Control zero is going to add this mix color node and it's going to mix them both together. Now on the mix type here, I just want to see the dark values or I want to add the dark values, so I'm going to change this to darken. And then I can control shift and select the darken to preview it. So I can now drag the factor and that's going to add that dark value. So if I turn this all the way up to one, it's just adding it all the way and it's fully black, but I want it to be more subtle. So I'm going to turn the factor to a 0.3 and that way it's much more subtle, but you can still see it a little bit. Let's select this darken and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And I want to use this one to mix up the last brick texture. So this darken result is going to go into color A and then this top brick texture that's going to go into the factor. And then let's control shift and select the darken to preview it. So because it's just adding the dark values, I can just make color B fully black and that's just going to add those dark values. So basically now we have that kind of gray bit right there, which is hard to see. Then we have these big black spots and then we have all these little black squares. So now let's make the custom colors. So I'm going to drag the shader nodes back here and I'll select this darken. I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And the result, we want to put that into the factor. And then here on the darken type, I want to change that to mix instead. So now color A and color B can be the custom colors. So for color A, I'm going to make this that gold color. And then for color B, this is going to be a very dark gray color. And if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using, color A is going to be a hex value of FF. A048, and then color B is going to be a hex value of 262626. Two, two, so let's take the mixed result and I can put that into the base color and I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. And then let's turn the metallic all the way up to one and turn the roughness down to make it look more like metal. Now I also want to put this value into the normal to give it some bump. So let's put the result into the normal and then to convert it to bump data, I'll go to the add menu and I need to search for a bump node and we'll put the bump node between the darken and the principled. And to convert the color data into bump data, we want the darken result to be going into the height value. So now if I zoom in here, you can see the edges look nice and bumpy. And it's a bit too strong, so I'm going to turn the strength to a 0.2 on the bump. Now I also want to make a little bit of variation in the roughness, so some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. So I'll go to the add menu and let's search for a noise texture and drop it down here. And I want to put the mapping vector into the vector of the noise and let's control shift and select the noise to preview it. So I'm going to turn the scale to 50 and I'll make the detail all the way to the max 15 and I'll turn the roughness up to a 0.6 so it's even more detailed. So now the noise texture factor, that can go into the roughness to control how rough or shiny it is and let's control shift and select the principal shader. Now I want to have more control over the roughness so I want to change the colors so I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for a color ramp. We'll put the color up here after the noise. Let's also select these and drag them out a bit so we have a bit more space. So I want to drag the black tab over and that's going to make it more contrasty so it's more shiny so I'll drag the black tab to about here and then I'll make this white tab kind of a dark gray color because if it is more dark it's going to be more shiny and the hex value that I'll be using for this dark color is going to be B7, B7, B7. Now when we join this together into a custom node group, I'm going to want to control the roughness values. So we'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a hue saturation value and we'll put this after the color ramp. So now the value on the hue saturation value is going to make it lighter or darker, so that will control the roughness. So that is it for the procedural material, so I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So I'll box select all the nodes except the material output, and I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. And if you press the tab key, that's going to go in and out of the node group. So I'll drag the node group over here, 
Let's make it bigger, and I can copy the material name and I'll paste it here into the node group. Let's hit the tab key to go into the node group, and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And if you click here on the group tab, there's going to be the inputs and outputs here on the interface. So I'm going to double click on this and I'll rename it to shader because I like that better. So now here on the group input, we can plug values up to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So let's take this scale from the mapping, and I can put that into the group input. And so that way, this mapping is plugged up to all the textures, so this scale will control the size of the entire material. Now if I click on the scale here, you can see it's three values, but I instead just want it to be one value. So let's click on the type here, and I'm going to change it to float instead, so it is one value. And then we need to turn the default value to one. And then if I go outside of the node group, we need to turn the scale back to one. So that will control the scale of the material. So let's go back into the node group. So I want to drag the node group right up here, and then I want to plug the metallic value into the extra socket so we can control that. And then I also want to plug color A and color B into the extra sockets, and I'll double click on them to rename them, and I'll rename this to color 1 and color 2. And then I want to control the grid visibility, so if I drag this back here, we have this darkened factor, and that'll control the visibility of the larger grid. So I'll plug the factor into the extra socket, and if I double click on this to rename this here, I'll rename it to grid visibility. Then I want to control the roughness of the material, so let's take the value from the hue saturation value, and I can put that into the group input, and I can double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename it to roughness. Then I want to control the bump strength, so if I drag the group input down here, let's take the bump strength, we can put that into the extra socket, and I can double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename it to bump strength. So I will drag the group input back here, I'll hit the N key to close the side panel, and I'll hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. And we can now review the final material. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the material, then you can also make it more metallic or less metallic, and then we also have the custom colors, so you can kind of make this a gold color or maybe like a blue color or just a white color, and then we also have color 2 which is that dark color. Then we have that grid visibility there which is that larger grid, and then we have the roughness of the material, and then finally we have the bump strength. So that'll finish it up for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase the procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. You can also purchase all of my materials by checking out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for Blender's Asset Browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. The links are all in the description. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.